ambulance service. There's a patient breathing. She's in labour. Every minute of every day, the ambulance service answers our cries for help. From the crews on the ground saving lives. One, two, three. Just keep going. To the staff in control, making the split second decisions on who should get help. I've got another cat one. I hope to God that's not real. <laughs> God, this is crazy. The Northeast Ambulance Service delivers emergency care for the 2.7 million people of Newcastle and beyond. We're coming as fast as we can. We've got multiple crews travelling. Oh, we've got you. We've got you. We're going to look after you. This is the story of how both the region and the service that cares for them are struggling to bounce back through the most testing times. We are one big ambulance service. One big family. Saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. Thank you very much. It's arms. Welcome to the North East. Weather. Good morning. A cold start to the day with patches of frost and some mist and fog. Are you ready? I can't believe how cold it is. Come on, Rob. Morning. Cars are very frosty. Very, very frosty. It's Tuesday morning, and Northeast Ambulance Service staff are clocking on for their 12 hour shifts across the region. Right, I've just had a lot of grief for drinking a glass of milk. Apparently, it's weird. What? I was made to laugh and then I sprayed milk everywhere. Is that what they were all laughing at? Yeah. How are we going to drop this debut single? <laughs> Morning. Hello. Hello, are you all right? Good, how are you? Good, thanks, darling. Call handler Fay is one of 2,500 staff looking after the 2.7 million people in the North East today. Morning. Morning, Sam. From Berwick-upon-Tweed in the north to Middlesbrough in the south, Sam and Richard in control will be responsible for dispatching ambulances across the patch. Good morning, 329. Who have I got today? Me. You've got a really enthusiastic... <laughs> uh, you've got Chris. And it's absolutely freezing this morning. Uh, we've had to chip ice off everything. Oh, I hope you have a good shift. We've got an emergency call for you there. It's a 19-year-old female, C2, uh, with nerve damage in her legs. It seems she's in the underpass. Yeah, that's overseas, thank you. I think she's no fixed board from what it says on here. Based in Walls End, three and a half miles east of Newcastle-upon-Tyne, are 329 Chris and Ikra. Tell you what, I wouldn't want to be on the streets in this weather. No, it's crazy. I think I might have been R before, you Do know. Reckon, I, I, I recognise so. her name. Does she look 12? Uh -huh. Like, really young. I think I've been to R before. Oh, sorry. Morning, are you all right? You all right, Pat? It's absolutely freezing. Have you been out here all night? Yeah, four or five years. What's been happening? Right. How long has the leg problem been going on for? Since I left the hospital, I've been so much. Yeah. I just walked out. What did you walk out for? Just the one that has gone through some pain and I was getting really stressed. Do you want to come on the ambulance to get warmed up? Do you know the cold will bring this on loads more? I know you're sleeping on, like, blankets and stuff, but it's still concrete. Oh. Take your time. <laughs> if I pop you on the bed... Oh, I'll go and push up. <laughs> Get you warmed up. We'll do some checks on you once you're a bit warmer, all right? I'm going to have a little look at your legs in a second. You'll get warm in a bit, all right? Be like a little turkey. You know, the last time I seen you, you were unconscious. What happened when I come round? You didn't, because you're not sure. I can't remember. 
And in how many years have you been living like rough, rough on the street? Oh, it's gone now, one now, honestly. Yeah. Where did where were you before that? Uh, I was in Perth. What made you uh, end up on the street? Domestic violence. No one deserves that, you know. And no one deserves that, to be beat up by a partner. Well, after I had my beard, it just stamped all over my stomach. And my C section came over and he left us in the room beat up. What happened to the baby? He's been adopted. Yeah, I thought that was the best thing for us. Yeah. Shall we get you into hospital and get you some help? Seeing as you were naughty last time and discharged yourself, I would suggest they probably want to keep you in for a little bit. Why don't you just stay in, get it all sorted, and then you don't have to keep traipsing back to the hospital, yeah? The modern ambulance service, we're dealing with tons of different problems. They're not just medical problems, they're social problems. Are you going to stay in? We do see the most horrific things in society. That are most vulnerable people, they're slipping through the net. Hold on, Napa. Come down, step on the train. Come on. It's all right, we've got you. I promise you. Right. We're just fighting fires. You ready? That's what it feels like. There are nearly 1,000 people in the northeast who are currently homeless. Could you ever imagine yourself being homeless? Yes, you could. It's not in the winter. We think we're hard done by when we're getting up like early in the morning when we go to work just to defrost our car and it feels cold and it's awful to think about, isn't it? Look at the heat on. I would say at the start of COVID, mm -hmm. the services were really good. They were putting like homeless people into like hotels mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to start changing now. So I think we'll, we'll find more we're dealing with a lot more. I can't believe she's 19 years old and she lives on the streets. She's had a tough life. It's really sad. She's been through loads and it must be awful. It's halfway through the day shift. So far, call handlers have answered 884 calls to the ambulance service. Right, okay, you just need to drag her onto her back as quick as you can for us. Just do it. You're not going to hurt her. Are they with your dad now? Are they coming in? They're running in. Right, I'll leave you with the crew. Well done. Right, thank you. Bye bye. Because, I mean, space readers are now 30 pence, you know. There used to be like 10 pence at one point. <laughs> I'm going to start doing overtime so I can put my gas on less. So that he's here in a nice warm building. <laughs> well, I don't know how to turn me heating off, right? Be flat. It's not boiling. It's like a touchscreen thing. But then you've got home, away, sleep, manual, all these different modes. Just put, of... it on, put it on manual and just turn it I down. Try... No, mm -hmm. you can't twist. Gas bill's going to be an absolute fortune. Ambulance services the patient breathing. Faye is answering her 21st call of the day. Like, what, what was the reasoning for doing that? Suicide. Okay. Is that quite a lot of blood? <clears throat> so I need you to try using a dry dressing or a clean cloth and press firmly directly on the wound to stop any bleeding. Where's the knife now? In the kitchen. OK. I just want you to know you've done the right thing, giving us a call. We're going to get the help out to you. 
but what I need you to do, if you can just try and promise me that you won't go back in the kitchen and pick that knife up, I need you to just try and stay calm and, and sit in the living room, OK? When I was younger, I was always the, the ditzy one and the bit of a clumsy one, and I was never good at school. How old are you? When I started working for the ambulance service, I was only 18. Is there anyone you can call who can sit with you? Any neighbour, friend? No, I don't have anybody. There's no one. OK. It was quite scary. It was quite, like, dawning. We have got that ambulance arranged. It is a high priority. We won't be long at home. All right? OK. OK, OK, right. Take care of yourself. Right, OK. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. And it opens your eyes massively to what the world actually is. It's not just fear in our little bubble. It can be a, a scary place. My girl. It's 1.30pm and ambulance crews have been on shift for six hours. One, two, one, two, party crew. Let's get ready, let's get ready, let's get ready, rumble. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Watch me drop the mic, watch me drop the mic, watch me drop the mic. Psych. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I think Anne and Jack are going to be our best friends after this. <laughs> Ambulance service, is a patient breathing? Yes, yeah. I'm calling on behalf of my neighbour. I've just heard a shout to the wall, help, help. How long has she been on the floor for? Oh, two hours. Can you keep an eye out for the ambulance? I will do. To me. Thank you, we've got an emergency call on. It's a cat three for an 85-year-old female. She fell at 11 o'clock this morning, unable to get off the floor and maybe have to force entry if there's no key safe or anything like that. That's all, Rosie, thank you. Working out of Blucher Base today, 328 Josie and Emma. They are 13 minutes away. I bloody love driving on blue lights. I like it. It's, mint. it's the power of the lights. It's just class. Like, I know it's hard work, it's not like even going fast, it's just feeling that you're respected on the road. <laughs> I don't get respected in my car because I drive a BM and no one likes a BM driver. Hello, Mary. My name's Josie. I'm a paramedic with the ambulance service. We're going to try and get in, but I think we might need to break your door down or change your lock or something. Um, how do you feel? You feel awful. We'll sort something soon. Yeah, we've just arrived at this patient. Unfortunately, we can't actually get into the premises. Um, we're going to either need the police to open the door or locksmith over. Oh, yeah. No problem. Um, leave it with me and I'll get that um, sorted out and I'll keep you updated over. That's great, thank you. Emma and Josie's elderly patient is one of the calls currently being dealt with by the 130 ambulances on the road today. 12 miles away in Northumberland, crewmates Shumel and Perry are attending another elderly patient. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Shumel, this is Perry. What's your name? Monica. Monica, right, OK. And sorry, what's your name? I'm Kate, Kate. my daughter-in-law. Daughter -in -law. Yeah. Okay. What seems to be happening today? I woke up not very well. It's at the front of my head. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know, I don't feel very uh, strong on my feet. OK. There's obviously something going on which we need, we need to work out. So Perry's just going to do a few checks on you. Mm -hmm. OK, so you've got this headache. Do you feel dizzy or lightheaded? Um, no. Right. So your balance is, is OK? Mm -hmm. OK, good. Your oxygen levels are good, which is what we want. And your heart rate's good, your blood pressure's OK. Yeah. You just look worn out. Mm, you do. You look shattered. Well, she doesn't look like I'm she normally does. She it. looks the as if she's just got the weight of the world on her shoulders and she's had enough. Yeah, <laughs> you know, as if just... that everything's all too much of an mm. effort. Well, what, what we'll do is we'll see what medication she's on. And just the 
Just, is that the only medication, so? Yeah, the doctor's taken her off quite a bit of medication, or...? No, they give her it, or she won't take it. Ah, <laughs> right. She only takes Warfarin. Mm -hmm. Did you notice anything? I think there's a ectopic somewhere. Ah, yeah, there is, eh? Looks like there's some ST elevation there. If you could find a prescription or a medication, that'd be really, really helpful. Were you feeling all right last night? Yesterday, through the day? I think so. She's very, very independent, and uh, <laughs> this is a nightmare for us. To, I can tell you, honestly, that is all she'll have. Initiate, it doesn't matter what the doctor has prescribed. Initiating her. that as per well, what she was told, that's the other... Well, I don't know. Yeah. She needs a review from a GP and say, right, this is what you need. You need to take it. <laughs> You've told them that she'll have nothing. I'll tell her. Well, Monica, how much warfarin are you taking? Oh, I take one tablet a night. Mm hmm. Um, that's it. So I think you're meant to take a bit more than that. Should I? Do you, yeah, I think you prescribed some of the tablets. Um, well, I know it was for my bones. If you prescribe something, you prescribed it for a reason. And if you're not taking it, then it's not going to be resolving that that problem that you've got. Does that make sense? Yeah. Particularly with your warfarin, you need to be taking the right amount of warfarin. I've been wondering whether I am taking the right amount. Yeah, I don't think you are. I've forgotten. Don't you know how much yeah. I should be taking? So, Monica, in terms of your ECG, mm -hmm. what's going on? Well, it's normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal. It's normal. Mm -hmm. It's normal. 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 It's a couple of heart attacks, you've had a full stroke, and you just don't look very well. You look really tired. So I think it's worth running you down to NSEC, to Cronenton Hospital. Mm -hmm. Am I going now? Yeah. If you're ready. I'm done when you're a struggle. Do you normally walk outside by yourself? Um, well, I don't go out there. So we're going to pop you on the bed, Monica. Yeah. Is that all right? That's weird, yeah. I'll try and put this on your thumb. Your hands are tiny. There you go. Lovely. I'll pop that on the back. Are you, are you feeling very better now, then? Uh, I think so. Yeah. You look a bit better. So these two mm. handsome men are to your aid. Where, where are they? Are they? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else turned up. You're going to make this blush under these yeah. bars? <laughs> Just shy lad. <laughs> right, nice, nice to meet you. We'll look after her. Don't worry. Okay, see you soon. Bye. Cheers, Bye. mate. Monica is taken to hospital in Cramlington for further assessment. In Gosford, a locksmith has been sent to help Josie and Emma gain access to patient Mary's property. Thank you so much. Oh, goodness me. Hello, Mary. Oh, bless you. I don't want to stand over you, but I'm just by the side. Mary, do you remember falling? Yeah, I do, yes. Yeah. I'd, everything just goes to me. Do you feel dizzy and then you fall? Yes. Oh, bless yeah, you. Yeah, Mary, right. I'm just going to check your blood pressure. You're lucky your neighbour heard you, Mary. Oh, I'm sorry yes. it took me so long to hear you. Oh, no. No, 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 don't be sorry. So where were you off to this morning, then, Mary? I was going to the care home to see my husband. Oh, right, so your husband's mm. there, is he? Do you go every day? No, just every other. Every other day? It's too upset to go every day. No, I'm sure. It's awful. Right, Mary, we'll have to take you to the hospital. But you can get an X-ray. Yeah. You've got the little shivers, haven't you? I have, I have, yes. Oh. On three, one, two, and... Thank you very much. No problem at all. Thank you. you take care of yourself. We'll be thinking of you. Right, I'll see you at the hospital. I'll leave you with Emma. All right? You're doing all right. Not really, though. Mm. Come on. Come on, Mary. Right, I'll see you at the I do my best, I think. So, I kept my husband at home too long to look after. Yeah. It's 
not easy looking after it. Is that what's the matter with him? Is it? Yeah. And it's completely blind as well, so he doesn't know where he is. He can't even see where he is. Aww. He can't see who's looking after him or anything. No. It's hard for you, it is. It will be for you. And you've obviously done the best you could for him while he was at home. Yes, I have. It just destroys people that disease, doesn't it? It does. It's a horrible, horrible disease. It's, it's terrible. Look after me, husband, and something happens to me first. That's the thing that they worry about. Well, Mary's in a safe place. It's not like he's at home. No, he's at home. Sorry, darling. People are living longer. Our elderly population is huge now. When you go in and you find the struggling on, and you think you don't know how they've been managing for as long as they have. I find that quite upsetting. Hang on in there. Socks. She's just really anxious about her husband and and the home that he's in and the care that he's receiving. So she's obviously not settled, is she, with them even being in there? But when you've done everything for them, it's a, it's a big trust thing, isn't it? Mm. it and it, is, it must be really difficult sort of handing those reins over to somebody else looking after your loved one. It's not something I would relish. <sighs> Do your pilot impression. We're now cruising over Northern Ireland. That's us. We've gone over the Irish Sea, heading our way to the USA. We're hoping for highs of 28 today, um, but we'll be landing in six hours. Sit back, enjoy your flight. <laughs> <laughs> Ambulance service is the patient breathing. It's hard to tell. She's kind of just collapsed. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. He's passed out on the floor. Oh, there's a bottle of whiskey. Oh, God. He's got to whip me. Is the patient breathing? No, he's passed away. You, you think he's passed away? Yeah. And is he cold to the touch? Yeah, he's yeah. Hello, sir. Hi, hello. Hi. Right, I've got the translator on the line. I'll let him introduce himself. Uh, please, 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 please. Such a sour. Thank you. 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 So I'd like to, for the ambulance to arrive because my partner just now almost committed a suicide. Right, so his partner's trying to commit suicide. Please, someone help me because I do not know what to do. Right. 329. 329, thank you. Got an emergency call for you there. It's a 62-year-old. Um, it's coming as unconscious. The query, something around his neck. Oh, you okay. Thank you very much. No problem, thank you. Walls End 329, Chris and Ikra are immediately dispatched to the suicidal patient. They are 15 minutes away. Injury, strangulation, unconscious, massive language barrier, and the query in that the head, there's something around his neck. Yes, it's hard for her to breathe and she asks right. for help. Oh, okay, so is she fighting desperately for her breath? She looks like she's gasping for every breath and I won't leave this room until the ambulance arrives. We've got the emergency ambulance arranged and we won't be long at all, OK? I think, I feel like we've dealt with a lot of mental health the last two days. Has been a I lot of mental health. I feel like it's health. affecting my mental health. Is it? Yeah. It's 
I think dealing with... I, I couldn't be a mental health worker. I couldn't be. Because I would just go home, like... It's like I can I fix the wound, but I can't fix your mind. Exactly. I, I just it, like, can't. Hello? Where are we going? Oh, how we doing? Round her neck, yeah. yeah. I'm Chris as a from the ambulance service. Yeah. How, we do, how we doing? Very upset, yeah. Can you have a look at your neck. John, you language, I'm... Yeah. Do you do you speak you English? No, I don't think we can. Can you tell me something about what's happened? She sleeping here. Yeah. At the moment, she. Do you speak Polish? Yeah. Right. Whereabouts? I don't know. What In bed happened. or hanging no, or? No, 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 no. On the hand. I just pull him. Yeah. Blood is uh, uh, white, yeah? Yeah. I... Pull it off. Yeah. Was she, was she yeah. fighting yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She whiting. Right. I don't know why. Right. Maybe she's got a lot of... She's a very strong woman. I don't know why. Yeah. What happened? Sometimes things get too much for people and they can't cope anymore and they need some help. Hello. We're just going to do some checks and we need to find out what's going on. Um, she seems quite upset. Can can you ask her what she's done today? You say this, Tom. Hello. Hello, Has she tried to hurt herself today? understand that um, there should be some help available but right now I just need to make sure she's not hurt in any way physically. No, but I Yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. Thank you. Have you tried to hurt yourself with this today? I wanted to suffocate myself, okay. strangle myself. OK. We would like to take this lady up to the hospital to get seen by the crisis team. There's a lot going on and she's, she's trying to harm herself today, so we need to just make sure she's safe and for them to start assessing and give her any help that she may need. Okay, thank you very much for your help. Take care. Ready? Yeah. Are you alright? Yeah. Problems with, with bills and money mm -hmm. is always stressful for people. Mm -hmm. And this is just the one thing that's tipped her over mm -hmm. the edge. So we'll try and get her some mm -hmm. help, okay? The patient will be taken to the nearest hospital four miles away to be assessed by the crisis team. We've seen a lot of like financial stress problems. Self-harm and suicides increased over the last two years. Isolation and lack of services have probably had a hand in it. I find it hard 
because we can't fix them. And paramedics like to fix things. But we can only try. It's satisfying when we can see a bit of light at the end of the tunnel and we can point them in the right direction or get them to the help they need. But I wouldn't do it if I thought we weren't helping people. It's all a bit sad. Someone's circumstance can change, like, instantly. Really quick it? one there. I think there's a lot of people just coping with, like, the money they have yeah. in their bank. And I don't think it would take too much for someone to really struggle financially. People live um, paycheck to paycheck, yeah. don't they? They've got nothing extra. Well then, 329. 329, thank you. I've just got you clear at the hospital there. Um, are you okay after that one? Yeah, we're both all right. I mean, she was really upset. Just, I think a lot of people are in the same position. They're getting like bills, cost of living's going up. A lot of people are struggling, and to do was just too much for this lady. Hold on. Oh, we're hearing more and more of situations like that. That must have been a horrible job for years. Um, thank you so much for your help um, today, and um, head back for your finish. We'll speak to you again tomorrow. It's not a bother, thank you. Good night. Have a good one. Thanks for your help. Thank you. You'll probably Grill. Home time, mate. Yeah, Let's home get time. with her away. Let's go. Ambulance services, the patient breathing. I'm inside a bus shelter. I saw that my legs are at a weird angle. Current average wait time is two hours. Two hours? I could be unconscious by then. Overnight, Control have answered almost 1,000 calls across the northeast. Basically, set a rug on fire, yeah. and then attempted to walk into the fire, which is now threatening to hang herself. What's happened? I, I'm, I'm his mother. I think he's having an acute mental psychotic episode. He's been hearing voices and behaving strangely. No one's good on this one. No one's good. Can you hear that? I didn't hear that. He said, no one's good on this planet. No one's good. Oh, the grand old Duke of York. He had 10,000 men. He ran them up to the top of the hill. He ran them back again. When they were up, they were up. Blue Chair 328, Josie and Emma, have just signed on for their 12-hour shift. You got a favourite nursery rhyme? Humpty Dumpty's obviously his favourite. Oh, don't I used to love Ring of Ring of Roses, right? But then I found out it was actually about the plague. Yeah. And then it actually. All of them have got a bit of a dark background, though, I think. Yeah, it's sad that, isn't it? NHS 111, is the call for yourself? No, it's for my mother. She's taken extra tablets. Would she speak to me to do an assessment? I can try. Do you know how many extra we took, Mel, on it? I'm not telling. And so was that an, an attempt to end your life there, Lorna? Yeah. Three to eight. Three to eight, thank you. Uh, we do have a job for you now. We're going to send it through. Uh, cap three. Looks like she's taking an overdose. Off we go. That's all we we'll see. Thank you. Oh, she's 90. Lorna, what are you doing? Why has she done that, bless her? Josie and Emma are 11 minutes away from the patient. Oh, it's sad, isn't it? She's wanting to end her life at 90 years old. It's never the option, but... Now, nah, we're turning right in 200 metres. Hello. Hi, it's Lorna. She's coming, coming down. Morning, just... Lorna. How are you doing? Morning, Lorna. Take your time, darling, that's it. There now. Do you mind if I just... Get yourself comfy? Yeah. Right. So, when I come down, I was... Do, do my hair. Aww. You do your hair and you catch do your, your breath. Hair. Oh, no, then we'll... we'll have a chat. Sorry. Yeah. 
I can answer a question now. You can answer us now. You've got your lippy on. Right, sweetheart. Can you just tell us what's been happening then? Why, why we've been called? Because I've taken an overdose. These ones, yeah. Was there some already gone out of the packet? Yeah. As far as I know, yeah. And what's made you feel like that this morning, Lorna? Why did you do that this morning? Because my walking is getting worse. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Don't worry, you're all Have right. Have a minute, catch your breath. Uh, we were talking about going into a home. Right. And then I decided this morning that I didn't want to go you into You don't want home. to go into a home. Well, you've got your beautiful home here, haven't you? Lorna, you sing to me as though you're doing really well for your age. I can't walk properly. Do you ever get swollen ankles and...? Yes. Yeah, looks like you do. I say my head, my feet are dead and they, and they what I call, tingle. Yeah. Have you taken your other medication as normal this morning, just as you've just I had this I extra? I think I took more or less everything that just was there. Just so I probably took... Mm -hmm. Extra that I probably shouldn't have. Okay. And how do you feel? Much the same. Much the same. Okay. Will I be going with you? Um, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna ring someone and see. We just need to speak to somebody just to see what those tablets might do t to your body and things, Lana, and what the best plan of action is. So Josie's gonna go and do that now and ring somebody. Okay. Hello there, my name's Josie. I'm a paramedic with the ambulance service. You know, do you feel that this was a bit of a shout for help and frustration rather than actually wanting to to go? I don't, I don't honestly know. Yeah, you don't... What would you think, Valerie? Oh, I don't know why. Well, she wants me here all, all, all the time. I and work down south. Yeah, and obviously that's not possible, and, is it? No. At the minute, it's not possible. But, I mean, I, I just don't know what to do for the best. You'd probably like me to go into a home, wouldn't you? I, well, I don't want to see you in a home, no. But no. I also want to know that, you know, that she, she's that you're safe, safe and, and, yeah. and cared for. I mean, I've got a, a carer coming in twice a day. Yeah, uh-huh. But... So, so do you think even if that was increased a little bit, or...? I don't know. We'll get you sorted, don't worry. She's taken them on purpose. She's, um, there was talk about going into a care home and she doesn't want to go. The thing is, Lorna, you felt really low this morning and I totally understand why, because you've got this beautiful home and you've got your independence and you don't want to give that up. No. And you feel frustrated because your body's letting you down and you're obviously... Yes. So your, your brain's still working perfectly, but your body's letting you down, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah. Don't get upset, sweetheart. All right? So I think there are things we can do to help. It's not all hopeless. Yeah. And I know it's hard when your family doesn't live here, isn't it? Yes. I think that's the trouble. That's the trouble, isn't it? Yes. I, I honestly, I just want people to make decisions for me because I, I don't know. Are they ringing you back? No. Oh. So the dose is well in the therapeutic range of what you can take, so it's not going to be harmful to you. So... Fancy all this for nothing. Well, hey, you wouldn't have got to meet us, though. So, I mean, you, there's always the positives. Always a bonus. Yeah. Always a bonus. I'm not saying to do it again, cos that would be really bad. And you might not meet anybody nice like me and Josie. No, Can't promise it. Yeah. So, you, you're all right to stay at home? OK. If you're, you're not you... going to take me off no. the No. If you're oh, happy with good. that. Oh, that's good. Only if you promise not to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> no, I won't do it You won't again. do it again.
I think the ambulance service a stretch. GPs are struggling and the vocation of caring, they're at breaking point. I just don't think we have the resources or the, the facilities for our elderly population. So what did you used to do, Lorna? Where did you used to work? I was a mother most of the time. Yeah, well, that's before a job in that, itself, isn't it? Before that, I used to... I worked at Barclays Bank. Yeah. And in those days, you had to leave the bank when you got married, didn't yes. you? Yes. Did you? Really? Yes. Isn't that... Yeah. sounds really archaic but now, doesn't it? that was a long time ago. I thought you were only 54. A <laughs> <laughs> <Old> flatterer. <laughs> Some days you just feel like a counsellor, you know, you're just kind of going in. Somebody just wants to talk to you. This job is caring for people. But I do think there should be sufficient support out there. Right, Lorna, we're going now. You'll be pleased to know you've got rid of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry you're going. Are you not sick of us yet? <laughs> no, I'm not. Are you not? She quite likes us, baby. That's the first time, isn't I it? I know. People normally shoo us out the door when they're bored of us. No. <laughs> no, because you've been so nice. You're very easy <laughs> to be nice <laughs> to, <laughs> Lorna. No. OK. Have a good day. Thank, Thank you, you, Lorna. Too. And you look after yourself, all right? I feel soon. Best. Take Thank care. Bye now. Oh, well, she was lovely. It's just really sad. I just don't want her to ever feel hopeless again. I want her to be supported all the time. I might just move in. I know. I see her, me. Three to eight. Three to eight, go ahead. Yeah, just let you know we're just about um, clear on scene of her. Oh, that's great, thank you. Um, are you all right after that one? Um, I know that was um, quite an elderly lady. Yeah, we're all fine, thank you. Um, yeah, bless her, she's taken an overdose because she just doesn't want to go um, into a care home. Um, we've put a little safeguard in through logistics um, just because she thinks maybe some extra help at home, maybe carers four times a day would be better for her. Oh, bless her. And it must be hard for her. She's probably lived there so many years and doesn't want to leave a family home. It's awful, but uh, thank you so much for your help on that one. I'm um, we'll just head back for your meal break. Thank you, and we will head back for break now. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Can you see him? Right, can you see him breathing through the camera? Right, so did he have a fit? He's how is he fitting? He's fitting. Oh, okay. So use that on a Zoom call, so he's meant to be doing like a court meeting through the Zoom and he's had a, a fit. Bless him. Bless him. Right. Got an ambulance travelling an hour fastest response. The paramedics are there, are they? Right, perfect. Thank you very much for your help. Well, that's a way of getting out of your court hearing, isn't it? Can you just have a straightforward call? I know. And is the patient away? If you were sort of sick on there, OK? Call handler Faye has been on shift for one hour. Ambulance services, the patient... Listen, listen, is he breathing? She's not breathing. Right, listen, listen to me. Listen to me, what's the... No, you just need to stop screaming. Stop screaming, I can't hear. What's the address? Right, OK. How old is she? Right, sorry, I need her to stop screaming. I can't hear what you're saying. Please, how old is she? Right, listen, we're getting an emergency ambulance arranged now, OK? I'm going to give you some advice on how to give basic life support. I need you to listen to me, OK? No, listen, put this phone on a loudspeaker for me. Come on, right. Lie her on her back, kneel by her side. Right, gently tilt her head back, lift her chin upward, pinch her nostrils together and keep them pinched. I need you to take a normal breath in, place your lips around the mouth and blow for one to two seconds. Can you see her chest rising? Is she breathing? 
Right, let me know every time she takes a breath. Now. Yep. Right, if someone opens the door and this phone needs to stay with the patients, we've got a crew outside. OK. Is that the ambulance? Right, I'll leave you with them. Right, well done. Thank you. Thanks, bye-bye. Hey, sorry, I've... I've, I've <laughs> Oh, that's oh my. That's how my um, yeah, I'm gonna get upset. That's how my cousin died. She had a, a seizure and fell down the stairs. Deep breaths. You did really well. You did come around. Just start Are you sorry? I know that's how my cousin died. <laughs> but I had a seizure and fell down the stairs. Yes. Oh. But now you did so well. Hey. You were dead calm. Yeah. You didn't sound like you were fucked. I know. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing, isn't it? When you take it back to home, isn't it? That's when it gets. When it gets to you. Oh. Hello, Oh. oh. Bless her. The most difficult parts. Just hearing people so distressed. It's really hard. And I know this sounds silly, but sometimes I make up the ending for these patients. You just think they've probably gone to hospital, being treated, they're back at home with a cuppa, got their feet up and they're watching the telly. Or they're back at school, back learning. I don't want to think that it's not going to be a happy ending. Ambulance service is the patient breathing. Hello? Hello there, my name's Rachel from the ambulance service. Yes. I'm from Caroline about Kim. Yeah, she's got a pain in her chest. Right, is she there with you at the moment? Yes, yeah, she's lying in bed. Kim, talk to the lady. Come on, Kim, talk to her. Hello, Kim, can you hear me? Kim? Kim? Don't worry, we'll have a range of emergency ambulance for you, OK? 330? 330, thank you. We've got a few in the job for you there. Crewmates Shumel and Perry have just cleared from a job in Newcastle City Centre. I'm um, a 60-year-old female uh, with chest pain and she has had a previous heart attack in the past. Uh, yeah, we've got that one there. Uh, we're on our way, thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. Wrap us out. Shall I blast through the Socrates? And then you could ask about past medical. That sound like a good plan. Yeah. Hello. Where are we? Is it Kim? It is, yes. Hi, Kim. I'm Shamel, and we've got Harry. Okay, we've got, got some chest pain at the moment, Kim. <laughs> right. Whereabouts is that pain? Can you point to it? Where your hand is. Mastectomy. So the pain's in the middle. Does it go into your jaw, your neck, your shoulders, your arms? Everything's gone numb. It's gone numb on that side. Have you got any pain in that? Is it the right arm? Uh, both legs have gone numb. You couldn't just pop your arms just down by your side, please, yeah. could you? I just need I to get to your chest, if that's all right. He's, he's going to stick some dots on your chest. <laughs> I'll turn round just while he does that. Just here. Does it, is it worse when I press? Um, no, it just hurts. Right. <laughs> Would you mean be able to pop your arms just down by your side again? Yeah. Then you can pull. Right. <laughs> just as you are. Nearly done. Right. So, wh when was this heart attack? How long ago was it? Oh, it's it was about ten years ago. Ten years ago. All right. Oh, lovely. Yeah. 
you've had a, a rabid response paramedic here before. I'll have a look at that in, in a moment. I'll look yeah, at this one first and then. Can you remember the sensation? Does it is it similar to this? Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. There's something not right. Mm. There's, there's no changes on your ECG, which is excellent. Um, well, is, I suppose that's a good thing. That is a good thing, yeah. Very good thing. Shall we sit you up a little bit? We'll try and prop you up. So, are you big Newcastle fans? I've been going since I was four. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Huh. Bob, show them the hell I used to go into the match. Me sons said I was a hooligan. <laughs> because oh, wow. I used to climb over the wall. Did you? Cheeky. Oh. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky. I couldn't afford to get it. <laughs> she was a hooligan's led the charge. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We've only been so, married so, 42 yeah. years, so... Just What's getting used to them, huh? Yeah? I used to be a fireman, and she was in... YTS. YTS. And uh, she saw us, and she put her clothes into us. <laughs> and the first time I got my eyes on him, I fell in love with them. Oh. Girls love a fireman, don't they? And we had two sons, both in the fire brigade. Oh, yeah. But Lee died. Oh, James. And it's been Christmas, and he'll be 40 this year. How, how are you coping since then? Not good. Oh. Lee was a lovely lad. Was. If you've lost your child, Christmas is rubbish. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry about that. Can you manage to get yourself to the side of the bed? I don't want to help you too much because I want to see you do it yourself. I don't have a lot of strength. Right, so. just, just whatever you can. Is that one usually a little bit weaker, is it? Me, complete right hand side. Right. It's that's, weak. That's from your stroke. So, yeah. Okay. Can we get you on your feet and just see if you can stand up? Just how you normally do. Is that how you normally get up? Yeah. Yeah? Can we see you walk around a little bit? Just with me holding it. Is that how you normally get around? Yeah, if I... Right. In there? Yeah, you can do. So, in terms of your chest pain, we can't rule out that it's not related to your heart. I, 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 think really I think what we should do is just run you along to the hospital, get your bloods done, get all of this done again, have you assessed by your doctor. Is that all right? Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. We'll get you on this chair. We'll wrap you up. Hey, you just hold, hold on the backs of my arms, all right? I'll help you up. Up on three, two, push, push three. over your feet, Kim. Big push. Down. Push your legs back. There we go. Couple of bumps. Are you ready, mate? Yeah, good to go. Thank you. Uh, you, and, you and Robert sound like you've had an amazing life. I've got some good stories. Yeah, I bet you have. I bet you've got to hold on to those memories. He's lovely. <laughs> I love him to bits. Yeah. I don't know what I'd do without him, and I'm going to cry again, because if anything happens to him, I won't go. Well, he obviously loves you very much. He seems like a gem. Three three zero. Three three zero. Thank you. I've just got you to clear at the hospital. Just to check how your day's been today. Yeah, it hasn't been bad at all. We're well, grafters up, <laughs> saving lives, breaking hearts, helping little old ladies across the road. What <laughs> we're all about, man. <laughs> well, uh, we'll get home to base now, I think. Thank you. Good night. Rebbe us out. We're finished, Ray. Yeah, so I'll get the tunes on. Domino on Hearts tonight. I'm Dave Griffin with you until 10 o'clock. We wanted to give a shout out to all the caregivers who do an amazing job in the community. I'll tell you what, I'm going to keep you going. My mama always did the best for me. I grew up on a quiet street. Straight out of school, up the woods, bare feet.
Having a smoke down the shop this week. We are finished. I am. I think I'm done for the day. I'm not, no, I'm too <laughs> mentally checked out. <laughs> I know. I don't know why I'm laughing. I don't know why I'm smiling. Because you've got to laugh through it, I know. I couldn't always do the things I should. Too loud, too proud, too rude. Speed ahead down a dead end road. Today it has flown by quickly. Mm -hmm. But it always is when your crewmates are all right. Yeah. I mean, you're average, but. Oh, well. I've always been middle of the road, Josie. <laughs> always been middle <laughs> of the road. You tell me you've been gone for so long. Why don't you well, I'm going home to my bed. <laughs> It's all about your imagination, I think, when you work in the call centre. All you have to go off is their voice. And you have to make this picture up in your head. I had dreams of being far away, making my life in a different way. Sometimes it's hard to appreciate the things you have to scrap. <laughs> One day I would love to be a paramedic. Because I feel like I'd love to see the patients. You know, I want to know what happened to Margaret. I want to know what happened to the old man that fell or the woman who had the stroke. And then I wouldn't have to sort of make up the endings anymore. Details of organisations offering information and support are available at bbc.co.uk forward slash action line.